yo 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 what up guys it's my first video uh, just a little bit of a video on learning Leona in the support role so it's a little bit of a replay I have I think I have two replays to show right now this first one is a Leona vs Nautilus matchup um, so it's Draven Leona versus Kaisa Nautilus this is a very favorable matchup for Leona so uh, I think I played this game pretty perfectly in my opinion uh, that's why I like to show it of course not every game is going to be uh, a perfect example or whatever but there's a lot of things in this game that I do that allow us to win bot lane even harder so I'd like to go over some stuff with you guys uh, start of the game pretty boring standard stuff five point defense it's pretty normal See, so I started with the Relic Shield to make my passive do more damage. Uh, a lot of people start the other shield as well, which is also good. The, um, what's that one called? Oh, Shoulder Guard, that's what it's called. And, eh. It's really up to you which one you want to start. The Shoulder Guards let you do more, but the Relic Shield will make your passive and your abilities do more damage, so it's up to you which one you want to start. They're both good. Uh, usually with Draven, I like to build the Relic Shield just because it does more damage on my passive. I'm going to do a little bit of a fake leash here. They're leashing bottom, so I decided to leash the blue. Draven Ward's Tribush. Pretty good by him. And now we will proceed with the laning phase. So, not all this walks around. Pretty greedy path thing. You can be punished for it if I'm playing a range support, but I'm not, so. Didn't go for the punish there. One of the things you should keep in mind is that Leona is very weak level 1 and Nautilus is very strong level 1, so you don't want to do anything crazy level 1. When I play Leona, I like to farm it out, I like to get levels, I like to go in level 2, level 3. Uh, of course, we have a, in quotes, winning lane, Draven Leona. People think this is one of the better lanes in the game. So they get level 2 first and go for the engage. Luckily, Kaisa missed the W. But Nautilus is kind of uh, pulling the trigger on these engages a lot early. So the best thing to do is just stun him. See, I'm level 2 now. I'm not really walking up for an engage. We don't really have the pressure. We don't have the HP necessary. So I'm not looking for anything crazy. Um, I'm going to pause right here. So, I actually decided to go in here because the Nautilus is in a position where I can cue him and walk in the bush. If he doesn't even react at all, I don't know if he's watching another lane or something. Uh, at least it is also on the way bot. And uh, this just goes pretty much perfect for us. At least it's here for the follow up. I know I wouldn't die there pers uh, like personally just from doing out the game, but we can go a little more time. So, if you go back here. see our minions we kill one minion I mean Nautilus is just why is just up so far that it looks like such a good find for me level 2 Leona is pretty strong level 3 Leona is when I usually like to go in when you have the W proc as well and the extra armor and magic resist but Nautilus was literally just sitting here doing nothing um, in a spot where I could walk in the bush and de aggro minions so I decided to go in with my E and uh, our Lisa is actually um, very close by right now, so it kind of baits them into a 2v2 fight and on our side of the map. See, Donald's goes back in with the hook, exhausts. My Draven exhausts the Kaisa. Let's see, who's there? Nautilus exhausts my Draven. It's kind of a slugfest now. Lee Sin's on his way from River, and this fight is just looking good for us. Um, I do steal the kill here after Nautilus flashes away, but Kaisa's just dead here. She can never kill me. And we pick up a nice clean two for two, or uh, two for nothing, actually. And we have, um, as you see, I killed there when our wave is ginormous. So now when this new wave comes in, our Lee Sin's helping us push. We don't even need the Lee Sin, technically. If it was just me and Draven, we could push the lane out and go for a recall, and that's exactly what we do here. So you can see we push the lane out. Um, you never want to stay for plates because... By the time we even get the plate, they're probably going to be around here in lane, and then they have the opportunity to push the lane back into us, potentially stop our recalls. Something that we don't want. So, we push the lane in and we leave. 
Oh, my camera keeps directing itself. I'm trying to click on myself. Um, I go. I like to go back. I bought a no magic mantle, uh, just because Nautilus does basically all magic damage. This is a good like uh, brain exercise to get out down when you play League. If you're against a full AD team, like let's say it's a Draven and a Pike Bot, uh, one of your boots, cloth armor, pretty self-explanatory. Kaisa does magic damage on her passive and some of her abilities, so I went boots and all magic. I had the money for it too, so it's just more gold efficient to spend all your gold instead of instead of keeping some in the bank. So I went for the magic resistant boots. I always like to get boots on first back. Boots, cloth, boots, no, always. As you can see, the lane now is starting to push back into us because we pushed that giant wave in. So their minion wave is huge compared to ours. We're gonna thin it out a little bit and they're gonna start pushing back into us. Nautilus is looking for an engage. I don't wanna fight into their huge minion wave, but if they walk so far away from the minion wave like they did, we get a lot of poke out. I tank the Kaisa W with my W, does less damage and I have the uh, armor and magic resist. And now we have the wave on our side of the map where we want it. And we can start amassing our wave and just slow push into them. I'm gonna speed it up here because I don't think anything happens for a fat minute. If we kill Nautilus here again soon. Um, we see our, our uh, their leading bot lane, they're warding up. We have a vision on them so we know exactly where they went and where they warded. So I pinged it twice. Uh, my ignite's up in 13 seconds. And my ignite's actually on a little bit less cooldown than um, So this is actually a good little thing to understand too is that more than likely your ignite is going to be up sooner than someone's exhaust um, just because the the cooldowns of the abilities 152 177 so if you do want to take a fight in a let's say like it's like a lulu lane or an enchanter lane and you're playing a engage support like leona thresh a lot of the times when you engage and you go for those uh 2v2 kills in lane the exhaust really stops you and you usually can't kill you might actually get uh, turned killed on by the enemy team when they exhaust your ADC. So one thing you should always keep in mind is that exhaust has a 20 second lower cooldown, or sorry, ignite has a 20 second lower cooldown than exhaust. So you have that 20 second window. It's a good, if you time the exhaust, you have a 20 second window to go in, try to look for a play. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Don't force anything to happen, but um, it is a good window of 20 seconds to look for a play in lane. And look for an easy kill. So at least since looking for a land gank, I'm looking to bait Nautilus into a hook just because our wave is bigger, we're slow pushing into them. Um, when you're slow pushing into them, um, I know this probably won't happen in lower elos, but junglers will go for a land gank because they can slip into the they can slip into the uh, the bush easily. Right now, since we have such an advantage in lane, uh, I'm pressuring them super hard here. So what I'm doing is standing in front of our minions, which you can see I'm standing in front of our minions right here, and I'm getting bush control. And you can see our minion wave is so big. I'm trying to uh, starve Kaisa off the farm right now. But I also don't want to take too much poke. So I'm walking in front of the wave. I'm trying to make her not get any CS, getting the XP. I'm trying to hold it as long as possible. This is actually really good for them if Lee Sin wasn't here. Because we push the wave in, we get on their side of the map, and they're looking for what they what we did to them at level two. Luckily, our Lee Sin is a very good player, and he's here for the counter engage. Uh, I get kind of fucked by the Draven in here, so I have to flash Q, but it's not really a problem. Oh shit, my camera. And uh, we get a nice 2 for 0 trade, and we push in a fat wave bot, get a tower plate, and now we go to Dragon. I'm pushing Kaisa way off the wave, so she has no ability to farm any of the minions that are getting attacked by tower right now. As you can see, she maybe gets a couple of them at the end, but she misses the majority of them. I'm going to immediately go to Dragon with Lee Sin, help him do it while the enemy team is dead. And then we're going to go on a reset while our wave is here and it's going to be pushing back into us. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't understand why it's pushing back into us, it's because since our wave is on their side of the map, their minions arrive first. Our minions have to still do the whole trek down the lane. So because of that, their minion wave will eventually push into ours. And by the time we get back, they won't, and since this is a cannon wave, by the time we get back, they won't have us pushed in. So that's a good thing to always keep in, keep in the remembrance is, if your wave is here, 
Even if it's bigger than theirs, it will always push back into you. Because he kind of says recalling, this is a very bad recall. Because it's going to push back into us and we're eventually going to be able to freeze on their minion uh, on our side. So, so far this is basically a perfect laning phase by me and Draven. Of course our jungler has been helping us a lot. But so far this has been a perfect game from the bot side of the map. As you can see their wave is a lot bigger. And Kaisa probably missed out on 7 CS. Nautilus is going in here. This is a really bad engage by Nautilus. They do have the minion advantage. But what they don't see is Noon Quiver to Noon Quiver and Vampiric Scepter. And we already have the advantage because of Draven being Draven. Um, a fed Draven. So you can see here I try to disrupt Nautilus's path by walking in front of him while spacing uh, Q's in. And we actually get him here. Pretty sure I fall here. Um, on a dive on Kaisa, but I'll tell you why it's worth after the play is done. So I die here to Kaisa, and it's not as bad as you think. So she picks up a kill on me. There's no, I'm timing the submerge as well. There's no shutdown or anything like that, so it's not too bad. She gets one kill, we get a two for one. Of course, they're not worth a crazy amount of gold, but Draven gets to form one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten minions. Push. One wave in, our other wave is not going to be here in time. Gonna push one wave in, maybe get a plate, recall, solo XP, solo gold. It's overall net positive. On support, you always want to be looking for net positive plays. So, that's what I did. As you can see, Draven's pushing in the wave, getting solo XP. He gets level 6 off of it, and he pushes the minion wave in. And the wave is going to push back into us. Thankfully, our Draven is also a, a decently good player. Um, so, this is the point of the game, which is the most important. Uh, point probably or the most important part is on my recall here I buy tier 2 ninja tabbies plated steel caps because if you look at their team auto attacker auto attacker auto attacker auto attacker auto attacker they have auto all auto attack based champions uh, a majority of AD damage besides like fizz and maybe a little bit of kaisa I'm not really gonna count Nautilus as a major damage carry so I go for plated steel caps and still have the no magic mantle Purchase a cloth armor and I'm going towards Aegis. I always like to build Aegis first on Leona. Never build Kindle Gym. Aegis is good because it buffs your W. So, what you see bot here is our wave is under their tower. Their wave is pushing back into us because of the rule I stated earlier. And because of that, Draven's on a recall and I'm on a roam. So, this is probably the best time for a roam you can have in game because if you walk back bot here, there's nothing to get bot. Um, there may be nothing to get on the map with a roam, but you're creating pressure and you're playing the game. So if you just were to walk bot, you may get into an autopilot type of mindset. And uh, I actually do get stuff here. So I walk in the bush here and I kill a ward. So kill the ward and I see Fizz walk. I actually saw Fizz walk from the lane down and put another ward in. So then I clear his ward again. And Fizz jumps on me and then ease over the wall. Um, I was actually looking to go in on him, but he dipped out. And, you know, that might not look like uh, a crazy play or anything, but I actually denied Fizz's vision now. So he has no ward in the bot bush, no trinket ward up for a minute or so, and he has the possibility of being ganked by our jungler now. So it's, it's a bigger play than you think. And then now I'm scanning river for any more wards. And this is my ward from earlier. So now I'm just going to walk back to bot lane, and Draven shows up the same time I do, and uh, everything's peachy. And you see, I walk back to bot as soon as there's two waves of mass. So I'm not missing XP, I'm not missing gold, I'm not missing anything with a realm like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier. I'm going to pressure, I'm gonna get bush control. I'm gonna control ward. They killed my control ward up here. I don't wanna walk into them. I don't know where their jungler is. And I'm gonna get bush control. And I'm gonna control the lane because we're so far ahead. Um, I see that they're missing. As soon as I see that bot lane is missing, or as soon as I realize, not really, I saw it earlier, but I didn't realize they were actually gone. As soon as I realize they're gone, I immediately go to the wave and start smacking on it. So, the worst thing you can do in this situation is try to walk mid, try to help your team, and try to get something done. Because what you're, what's going to happen is as soon as you get around here in the river, the play is already over, everyone's already gone, 
and all you're doing is missing out on XP, gold, whatever else. You're missing out on everything else that can be a positive. Of course, it's a bad play. You didn't follow the roam in the first place. But what you can try to do is make up for it by pushing the wave bot, denying a cannon wave and another wave, and also picking up plates with Yona Q and Dreven Autos. So that's what I tried to do bot. I tried to instantly push the wave. As you can see, I'm pushing even the next wave because Kaisa is just now recalling. Our next wave is coming in. Uh, I'm going to let Draven farm. I don't think we get the next plate, so I'm going to let Draven farm. I'm going to let Draven get the next plate if he wants it. And I'm going to recall. And as soon as I recall here, I get my Aegis, I get my art, I get my ward upgrade, and I get control wards. And this is another time where you can uh, not walk back the lane if you don't want to. As you can see, my Draven is just not recalling, and the menu wave is pushing back into us. It's very easy things to spot. There's patterns in the lane of when you can roam, when you can leave, and all these other things. So, I see a fight breaking down the top lane. Fizz is chasing. I have T2 boots. I was walking down mid lane. I see there's a fight going on top. I say, hey, let's go. T let me go top. Missed my ult there. Makes Fizz walk back into the lead so it's not all bad. Lee gets to pick up another kill and he's 5 and 1 now. He's very strong. 11 minutes in. Get the kill there. Fizz is dead. So I decided to push in mid lane with my mid laner here. This is something you should do. Help your mid lane push the wave in so we can get a crash off and make Fizz miss as many minions as he can. They get a crash off Bob, but it's okay because uh, Javen's really strong. He doesn't really need my help right now. They're not going to dive in. And uh, I walked the far way down, the far way around, and I'm back bot now. And I'm back bot. I didn't really miss much. Maybe a, a wave, but I ended up getting cannon mid and it's to stop. So right here, I know I'm stronger. I know we are, uh, as a bot laner, stronger. So what I'm going to do is just pressure the wave, um, pressure them up, try to zone them off the minions as I've been doing all game. I go to Dragon, I help my jungler with River, and now I'm walking mid with my jungler because there's nothing to do bot lane. Their bot lane is playing so far behind that we can't do anything. And we immediately start Dragon. My mid laner actually solo killed the food, so... Good game. And, and as you can see this game, my top laner is 4 my mid lane is 1-3. But we're still crushing them in terms of map play, presence, gold. If you see at the top, we're winning in 3k gold. It's 13 minutes in, and we're winning by 3k gold already. Um, I see their jungler mid, I see Nautilus mid, so I immediately push the wave bot. And I'm going to pressure off the wave. As you can see, I'm standing up, walking around, blocking the cannon just in case she wants to W it. And we end up picking the tower up. So here I try to CC chain Nautilus as much as possible. I predict the Fizz jump with my ult, ignite him immediately, stun him, wait for him to walk away, E him, and go ham. I actually flash up Nautilus here. We pick up a two for nothing and tower and push the wave in, literally all positive. The best thing you can do on the Yona is Q, W, then E, or Q, ult. Let's see what I do here. Yeah, I go for the Q on Jarvan, get the Jarvan kill. Jarvan, I know I'm dead. Okay, so this is something important here. So, we actually go for a little bit of a risky dive, a little bit of a greedy dive here. Um, Kaisa flashes, Jarvan goes in. As you can see, I walk up. I stun the Jarvan. We pretty much insta-kill him. We all get pulled by Jari or uh, by Darius. I take the Darius too. I know I'm dead, so I kite Darius away from our team. As you can see, he turns around. He turns his character mod around and fights me instead. Luckily, our Lee Sin is so strong that he wins the fight. And uh, Kaisa also dies, so she thinks she can kill Lee Sin. But I tried to kite Darius away there and uh, help him out. Uh, of course, Darius picks up like one more kill, but it's not really a problem. All right, uh, Lee Sin and our Draven are very strong and fed now. You see, I bought my locket first item, and I think this game I go chain second item. I make one more misplay this game around the third dragon, which I'll point out when we get there. But my team is kind of popping off right now. Was really good. I'm just coming back from base because I died. 
I don't think anything happens for a fat minute. I mainly just posture around mid lane, look for wards, play out of vision. There's one thing I like to do on Leona a lot is play outside of vision, try to um, uh, shadow my teammates. So let's say if it's a good explanation here is if my uh, let's say like my this tower is gone and we're pressuring the second tower. My ADC is like here farming minions. I will sit right here, and uh, they think he's free because he's alone. There's one person here. So they might try to like flank him here and then engage here. What I'll do then is come around the side where I'm sitting and help him out and support my teammate. And then we'll be able to turn the fight pretty even, pretty easily. So you'll see that later on as the game progresses. Right here is actually a pretty fatty misplay. Um, I honestly thought our Vlad was a lot stronger than he was. But uh, what actually happened here is Nautilus did a very good job of buffering my ult, my ult stun. So he actually did get stunned by Meryl. Or he did get stunned, but he pulled himself while he was stunned and we didn't run able to get the kill and the team backed him up. So a little bit of a misplay. Um, probably shouldn't go for the play, but our Vladimir was stronger. Um, but those are plays that can really lose you the game if you're if it's a close game. Uh, this game isn't that close. As you see, I'm going Ruby Crystal. I'm actually rushing uh, the Chains item second because when you're versus someone like Darius, where it's just one person who's fed, Darius is a champion that can be easily CC'd, easily kiteable. So the more you stun him, the more you CC chain him, the better you'll be at winning the fight. So I'm going Chains. And just warding, walking around our jungle. Got my red drinking on. Pretty much have wards all over their jungles, all over the flank entrances. Um, I'll make another vi video later on warding in Season 11 because I think the season in terms of wards has, has changed a lot compared to previous seasons, especially with the addition of the wardstone item. So I'll probably make a video in the future on the best places to ward, when to ward, how to ward, um, how to ward versus specific champions and all that kind of stuff. So right now we see their whole team going top lane and we end up seeing three people top two people dead, so me and Draven are pushing the mid lane. Like I said, it's never good to over-rotate to help your team. Um, I actually do rotate here, I think after I get the tower. I'm rotating now because I don't really need to help getting the, help getting the tower, and there's a fatty wave here. So, our least sun is also pretty fucking strong, and it's 2v2. So I was trying to get them to kite to me, they didn't really kite to me. Uh, but as soon as the play is over, I leave. See, it was just a waste of time. Literally just what I said earlier, if you over rotate, it's a waste of time. But they started winning, so I thought we could win it. You can see now, I'm shadowing mid. Vladimir kind of fucked my whole play here, because this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. My Draven is going for the play on mid tower. We have Fizz coming mid with O. Jar Jarvan's coming. He's baiting his team with the pings right now. Draven dodges the ult. If Vlad doesn't show himself right here, Jarvan EQ ults uh, Draven. Fizz Q's in. I have ult. I have flash. I have ignite. It's probably a two for nothing for us. If Vlad doesn't show himself and ruin the whole play. Um, I E the red buff to get it to pull over the wall. And now it has two bars left of aggro. So Draven just picks it up. And we're good on that. This is probably my biggest misplay of the game here after this dragon fight. My boss fails this flash right there. Team's farming, we're prepping for drag. Everything a good team should do when you're ahead. It's already kind of long, so I'm probably after this and after a couple of, one more team fight. You see here, I get baited. So, let me tell you why this is a good play and a bad play. This is a good play because I didn't think Lee Sin would need help with Dragon. As you can see, when I use my ultimate, Dragon has a 1k HP left. Smite literally does 900. Doesn't have Smite up. So Draven and Lee Sin jumps over the wall. Lee Sin jumps over the wall, making Draven have, makes Draven have to finish the Dragon. 
Which, it should be the jungler finishing the dragon, and Draven should come up with us. So, in my eyes, Draven should already be off of the dragon at around 1.5k. I hit the three man stun here, Draven should walk up with W. He has flash almost up, and he's lost. We get a kill here. As you can see, Draven's walking in pit, catching an axe, and he's still walking in pit. I thought, in my eyes, Draven's walking up already to help me, but he doesn't. So now I'm stranded, and I go for the E. I, I should have just been more map aware of what's going on in the game. So this is an end play by me. I get killed, and I'm pretty sure our whole team dies here, and it was a bad play. It was a good play turned bad because my team didn't really get off the dragon. Um, something like half that happens in game. Literally type might be type, I thought you were going to help. Stuff like that. Um, literally just type might be and then no one gets tilted, in my opinion. So, that's probably like about the end of the game. We start just, we're like hard rolling them now, 7k up in gold. I'm literally warding for Baron right now. So, uh, the next objective on the map, Dragon's on like a 4 minute cooldown or timer right now. So, I'm warding the jungle, one here, one here, one here. We literally have their whole jungle warded if you look at the map. Uh, put a control ward here. Someone already has a control ward there. That's why I usually put mine. But we have literally their whole jungle warded. So the next thing that is on the clock here is to do dragon. As you see, I'm just peeling Darius off our team. It's omega free if you just peel Darius. So we just go do we go do Baron, and then we uh, kill their team, and we eventually just win the game. Uh, the main thing I want everyone to think about from this game is just laning phase. How to lane when you have somewhat of an advantage. Uh, luckily, our jungler played very good this game, so that helped us have an advantage. That's always not a thing. Uh, one of the things that I hate seeing on engage supports is the mentality that because you're playing someone like Thresh, Leona, Blitz, is that you have to do something. And if you're not doing anything, you aren't inherently useful because you should know your power spikes and. A lot of the time, imagine if I was the Nautilus on the enemy team, I'd be going for hooks too with Kai'Sa, and I'm getting baited by the design of my champion. So sometimes when I play Thresh or Leona, I'll E in, and it's because I think I need to be E'ing in, I think I need to be going in, I think I need to be stunning. I E in on what looks good, and then the enemy team collapses on me. Uh, maybe they teleport bot, maybe the jungler's there for um, a little bit of a gank. Uh, so something like that happens, and then you fall behind and then when you fall behind on an engage or a tank support you're never useful so the best thing you should do is learn your power spikes learn matchups and I'm hoping to release some more videos on power spikes on Leona Thresh Blitz not uh, maybe some matchup guides on Leona Thresh not those are my mains so those three champions mainly uh, this game in of itself Leona versus Kai'Sa and Nautilus is a very good matchup Kai'Sa is pretty immobile early um, level 6 she does get her ult but earlier than that she only has speed buff um, Nautilus is very immobile if he misses the hook he doesn't have a way to proc aftershock besides the auto attack and you can kite him out in auto space him very easily so he doesn't get the aftershock proc off and if Nautilus doesn't get the aftershock proc off he's not very tanky so those are some things you should know when playing an engage or a tank support um, this was just one replay I'm doing today to try it out, to see how people think of it. Um, I do do personal coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, where I can VOD review you, try to help you out on certain champions, mainly engage tank supports. Um, Galio, Thresh, Nautilus, Bard, Alistar, Blitzcrank, Braum, champs like those. And uh, I don't know, I plan to make more vids in the future, we'll see. But for now, I'm just making a couple coaching vids, hopefully they help someone out. So, uh, hope to see you guys later. Bye-bye.